Rub up your engines! Today, we got a 92 Jeep Wrangler. The guy bought it from California. It's a standard transmission and it's stuck in first gear, so we gotta figure out what's going on. But first, let's do an overall view of these things. Are they worth buying? Which one should you get and what should you look out for? First of all, this came from California, so it shouldn't be rusted. Because these things are notorious rust buckets if they're up north. I mean, everything is rotten. As you can see, look, clean, clean. The springs are clean. These shackles would be rusted solid if it was a Massachusetts Jeep. And the first thing you're gonna see is on the hood. I love the Jeep plugs, cause yes. You can open them really a long way to do some work. <laughs> There's lots of work room, and it isn't gonna hit you in the head unless you're trying to work in a hurricane. Now for my money, this is the best engine to get. You get the straight six cylinder engine. These sixes have plenty enough torque for getting you around. And as you can see, other than being dirty, no rust. Firewall's not rusted. You get a northern vehicle, everything. The hinges are gonna be rusted, probably something well done. This will be all rotten, and it's not. This is a nice clean California Jeep. And as we open the door, this is what most Jeep guys want. A standard five-speed transmission, not an automatic. Because really, these things are made for off-roading, right? The old-fashioned automatics weren't that great for off-roading. The modern ones, it's another story. They're completely different designs. You got five gears. You're not going to really have any problems doing off-road and going in a snow plow and whatever you want to do. Since this is also an older one, check out the four-wheel drive. You got two-wheel high, four-wheel high, neutral, and four-wheel low. And what is it? It's mechanical. None of that electronic crap that's in modern cars, but it's still modern enough. You can see you don't have to mess with hub lockers and crap like that. You can see it's got universal joints in the end and a drive shaft. You don't have to mess around with hub locking. It's got a differential. You just do it mechanically with a lever. So let's start it up, see what it sounds like. Actually, it sounds pretty good. Got 120,000 miles. In general, they're good for a lot more than that. The only problem with this is it's stuck in first gear. No matter what you put it in, when you push up and pull on a clutch, it's not gonna go anywhere. Just out of curiosity, I wiggle this around a bunch. Let's put it in reverse, see what happens. It went in reverse, now it's going backwards. So we do have reverse now. Now, the owner swore up and down that it was stuck in first gear, but he towed it over here. The act of towing it over here broke it out of being stuck in first gear. If you ever get one of these things that's stuck in first gear, tow it, push it, rock it back and forth, pull on the shifter, a lot of times it'll break itself loose. The reason that they get stuck there, there's only three real reasons. One, if the clutch is worn out, they can do that. The clutch didn't feel that bad. Two, if you got a problem with the linkage, it would do it, but the linkage goes into the gear, so I doubt it was that. And the third one is, if the transmission has really serious internal wear, doesn't have enough fluid in it, somebody abused it, then it'll get stuck in first gear. So the first thing we're gonna do is check the fluid. Now to check the fluid, you gotta have it on a level surface, so I moved it down the driveway where it's flat. Now as we crawl under here, you see one thing that I don't like is, this transmission has that stupid Ford design where the clutch slave cylinder is built inside the transmission. So if the clutch slave cylinder goes bad, instead of taking a couple bolts off and replacing it on the outside, these clowns put it inside. You gotta pull the whole transmission off to replace it. Stupid design, it's a racing design. Hey, this isn't a racing vehicle. You go off road and stuff, but it's not made for racing. It's still happening here, it'll flip over. Now, strangely enough, later model transmissions on these had the slave cylinder on the outside. So if you are looking at one, you might want to get a later model one that's got the slave cylinder on the outside instead of on the inside. Be a lot easier working on. Now the guy I wanted before him was a fireman in California. And you can see he did some decent mods. Bill Steen shocks. He's got a fancy stainless steel exhaust system he's put on it. As I said before, man, this thing's solid. It does have a little superficial rust now because he's been driving around the beaches in Rhode Island. But you can see everything is solid. You get a solid vehicle like this, you really can't go wrong. Now we're gonna check the fluid right here. We just take it out and see if it's full. You basically just unbolt it and the fluid should start coming out a little and it's full. So it's not low on fluid at all. So it's not a fluid problem. Well, while we're on here, we'll take a look at what the linkages look like. Truthfully, they don't look bad. They're all clean. Oh, we're spraying with some WD-40 anyways. So I'll get the WD-40. We start spraying all the linkage with it. Now this shows how well built these things and obviously it went off road. This oil pan's been hit many times, but it's not dripping oil. Solid steel. That's why you want steel and not plastic. You want to put some kind of a protection plate on it. 
if you're really going insane rock crawling. Now let's hope that it's stuck because of external problems. Linkage sticking, because he did say it was stuck in first gear. And as soon as I got in, I could put it in neutral first, fifth, it went all over the place. The act of towing these things, or if you're stuck somewhere pushing it back and forth, can often break them loose. We'll take it for a spin and see how it goes. So I'll climb back in, and I do mean climb. These things are high up in the air. Start her up again. Put it in reverse. Back it up a little. And I've already figured out what's wrong with it. The clutch is worn out. It's not the transmission, the clutch, because I got it reversed, but when I pushed on the clutch, it kept moving. It's not releasing, and then it got jammed in first gear. So what we'll do is this. Put it in first gear, start the vehicle, and we'll pull it back in. And we'll put it in neutral. So actually, it's good news for the owner. The transmission is fine, but it needs a clutch. And since it's got that stupid slave cylinder that's built inside the transmission, replace all the parts, the slave cylinder, the clutch pressure plate, the disc, the throttle pan, replace them all. What happened is it got stuck in gear because the clutch isn't working right. When I backed it up, I got it in reverse, no problem. But then when I pushed on on the clutch, it wouldn't stop moving. That means that the clutch is not disengaging. We don't know the history of it, when the last time a clutch was put in it. I doubt if it's the original one, but you buy something like this, expect to put a clutch in it, you know, and put a good clutch in all the parts. Don't waste money haggling over pennies. If you're gonna go off-roading, get a heavy-duty one. The slave cylinder, you might as well change it because you gotta pull it off to change anyways, then you know. The only other thing that can go wrong is the clutch master cylinder, and that's external. You don't have to pull the transmission off so if you don't want it you don't change that later but change the slave cylinder and change the clutch kit he didn't ruin the transmission it's not the transmission and the fact that the guy towed it here eight ten miles from here just to jostling around broke it out of first gear <laughs> and now it's going into gears but i would not drive he's going to tow it back because anytime you go it's going to get stuck in gear it's not safe to drive the way it is because then you're stuck in first gear now if you lived down the street sure you could put it in first gear and drive it there but there's a lot of stops between here and a giant bridge you got to go over so he'll tow it back and i'll have a guy put a clutch in it but now you know how you can check out to see is it the clutch or is it the transmission in this case it's the clutch because it just would not disengage it's physically broken inside and yeah i expect it on something this old you know and there's so many parts of these off-road standard if you're gonna go off-road go for a heavier duty or clutch believe me you don't want to burn it out while you're revving up crawling around so but overall it's a nice jeep you paid 7500 for it and it is clean but like i said if you're looking at one of these and you see all the frame and the shackles are all rusted and falling apart, run away, run away. I've seen them where they got new bodies welding on and you know, they made these things. They're made out of steel. So if you look at it one, bring a magnet with you. And if it falls off and you see it's fiberglass, it means the whole thing's been replaced with fiberglass. Don't buy one that's rotting out. They're made with steel. You want one with steel. Now, I mean, if you're a fanatic and you want to lighten it up, sure, you can buy one, take all the steel off, put fiberglass on, go right ahead. And if you wanted one like that that somebody converted, in that case, just make sure that the frame, they don't replace the frame with fiberglass. Make sure the metal frame is still solid and not rotten, because if it's rotten, you run away from these things. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Kim says, my car dies when I shift under gear. I got a 2004 Grand Prix, non-supercharged. I had the upper and lower intake manifold gaskets done. And since these gaskets were changed, the car doesn't run. First it drove home, then it died and won't start. Then it started and died. Now when you put it in gear, it dies. Help. I'm a woman with no mechanic and no money. Well, one, they ripped you off. Go back to whoever did that gasket job. They ripped you off. They screwed up the job. When you take the intake manifold off, there's so much crap on a car, you got to move out of the way. They could have broken wires, cracked vacuum lines. You could have even have cracked the intake manifold. Things made out of plastic. It's cheap crap, right? They screwed up. Take it back. Because there's so much stuff that could be going wrong, and I can just about guarantee it has to do with the work they did. They screwed the job up. Take it back to them. You got to find a good mechanic, check it out, because they obviously screwed something up. Maybe it's something simple, like a vacuum line fell off. Then they can just plug it back on. But somebody who knows what they're doing has to look at it, because odds are they screwed something up when they did the job. There's so much plastic and wiring in there, and it's 19 years old. When they took it all apart, they probably broke something else. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.